This is Mountaintop History, a podcast produced by the Thomas Jefferson Foundation at Monticello. Mountaintop History brings forward meaningful stories from this historic home and plantation, from the past and from the present. My name is Kyle Chattleton. And I'm Olivia Brown. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll learn something new. Just off the James River in what is now Chesterfield County, Virginia, there used to be a small settlement known as Osborne's. In 1708, Captain Thomas Jefferson II and his wife Mary Field Jefferson were living in this settlement with their three children and another is on the way. That son, born on February 29th, was named Peter and would later name his eldest son after his own father. Thomas Jefferson. According to his own partial autobiography, Thomas Jefferson traced his father's family heritage back to Wales and Mount Snowdon, which he said was the highest peak in Great Britain. It is possible that the first member of the Jefferson family to arrive in North America came in 1612, very early in the period of British settlement. Jefferson's grandmother, Mary Field, was of English and Scottish descent and a granddaughter of Henry Soane, former Speaker of the House of Burgesses in the Virginia Colony. The Jeffersons were by no means lowly farmers. Though his son Thomas said that Peter Jefferson's formal education was quite neglected, he also wrote that his father, quote, being of a strong mind, sound judgment, and eager after information, read much and improved himself, end quote. While formal education may not have been part of his childhood, Peter Jefferson clearly put value in a good education through the example of the later schooling he provided to his own children. His descendants described him as having extraordinary vigor, both of mind and body, and with remarkable powers of endurance, untiring energy, and indomitable courage. There were tragic parts of his childhood as well. He lost his mother when he was only eight years old. When his father died later in 1731, Peter was a young man at 24. As the executor of his father's will, he also received part of his father's properties, specifically at Mannequin Creek and Fine Creek, which both sat in Goochland County, just south of the James. The house, known as Fine Creek Manor, was constructed in the early 1730s, and he was likely occupying it by that time. In his early adult life, he followed his father's example and became a justice of the peace in Goochland County. Later, he became the sheriff and county surveyor. The location of his home at Fine Creek Manor was quite influential in his early adult life. Peter Jefferson's nearest neighbors along the James River were members of the Randolph family, William Randolph of Tuckahoe, and his uncle, Esham Randolph of Dungeness. He struck up a close friendship with the young William Randolph, who later sold land to Jefferson along the Ravana River. The land Jefferson purchased from Randolph along with the rest of his Piedmont estate was later named Shadwell. William Randolph's uncle, Esham, had a different kind of influence on Peter. His eldest daughter, Jane Randolph, married Peter Jefferson in 1739. Peter and Jane Jefferson had 10 children over the next 16 years. The young family relocated to their new property along the Ravana River. Peter Jefferson was described by his descendants as the third or fourth settler in the region, which was only established as Albemarle County in 1744. In a continued effort to be part of his community, Peter Jefferson was a founding justice of the peace, a judge of the Court of Chancery, and a lieutenant colonel of the Albemarle County Militia. He had to put these leadership positions on pause, however, when William Randolph died and caused the Jeffersons to return to Goochland County and to the Randolph estate of Tuckahoe. It was during his years living at Tuckahoe that Peter Jefferson gained renown as a land surveyor. Working alongside Albemarle County surveyor Joshua Fry, Jefferson worked on a number of projects for the British colonial government. On one expedition, Jefferson and Fry helped demarcate the Fairfax Line, 
of Laura Fairfax's property in the northern neck of Virginia. One of their companions described a treacherous journey through uncharted land, perhaps showing that indomitable courage he was later remembered for. Peter Jefferson's largest project came in 1750, when he and Fry were commissioned to create a map of the entire Virginia colony. The Fry-Jefferson map, completed and printed in 1751, became one of the most accurate maps of Virginia for over 50 years. Peter Jefferson's professional career as a land surveyor and prominent member of the community continued, and he served as a magistrate, county surveyor for both Goochland and Albemarle counties, county lieutenant, and ultimately a representative in the Virginia House of Burgesses. Back in Albemarle County, the Jefferson home at Shadwell was originally a plain weatherboarded house, but was later improved with added outbuildings and a water mill off the Ravana River. Peter Jefferson continued to accumulate more land, eventually owning a total of 7,200 acres across the state. As members of the landed gentry and Virginia elite, the Jefferson family lived a refined lifestyle. This was only made possible because of the more than 60 people enslaved by Peter Jefferson. Among them were Sawney and Sandy, who worked as shoemakers. Phyllis and her children, Goliath and Dina, were field hands. Samson and Jupiter constructed the mill. When Peter Jefferson died, they and many other enslaved people were separated by the terms of his will. Jefferson bequeathed enslaved women like Chloe, Pat, Nan, Kate, Kachina, and Eve to his daughters. To his wife, Jane Jefferson gave one-sixth of his slaves. His two sons, Thomas and Randolph, were given ownership of the remaining enslaved people owned previously by their father. Jefferson's will also divided his land holdings. His eldest son, Thomas Jefferson, inherited the property along the Ravana River, including the mountain he would later call Monticello. Ultimately, Peter Jefferson's role as an early Albemarle County leader, his devotion to the education of his children, and his lifestyle as a man of the land gentry would go on to strongly mold the future of his son, the future president of the United States of America. This has been another episode of Mountaintop History, a collaboration podcast between WTJU and the Thomas Jefferson Foundation. Join us for new episodes every two weeks on Apple and Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and the Virginia Audio Collective. To learn more about Monticello or to plan your next trip, visit us online at monticello.org.